corporations, this is a little crude, but basically decided they would go across the globe, which they, capital has always done, to seek lower wage production of industrial goods. Now, in some ways, that could be good if people in, across the world in the industrialized world could organize, unionize, and we had real democratic control over capital and real industrial policy, and we would train people to do higher value-added industrial production, you know, machine tools, alternative energy, wind turbines. Um, we don't have the industrial policy of Northern Europe, so even Obama's $5 billion modest amount in the first recovery for alternative energy, we're importing those big wind turbines you see. 70% of them come from Germany and China. We don't produce them. A lot of the stimulus money is leaking out of America because we don't produce industrial goods anymore in this country. Now, it's a good thing when countries begin to, you know, develop textile industries, develop basic steel, you know, for countries like South Korea, Taiwan, you know, did develop through that, building ships, whatever. But it only benefits ordinary people if they can unionize. One of the dirty little secret is, because China is this weird, supposed Marxist on the state, but a, a capitalist state that represses union rights, Chinese workers are incredibly productive in the industrial sector, um, but they can't make wages that allow them to produce, to consume the very goods they produce. It's a classic Keynesian global dilemma. Ordinary working people can't consume the very goods that they very productively produce. You have heard, if some of you read this little pamphlet called the Communist Manifesto, it's a classic crisis of overproduction and underconsumption. And what happened to American workers, because <coughs> workers around the world, and we are internationalists, we believe that there should be a global working class that struggles to improve its living standards by forming unions, by getting involved in small democratic politics, by trying to use democratic politics to lever the state, to improve their life conditions, to fight for decommodifying, basic human needs like health care, education, housing. You know, hint, Americans, we have as a role to educate the most miseducated public as to A, the minimal social rights they hold dear, and why if we don't expand social rights, that is using progressive taxation, the power of the state to redistribute income, to provide high quality health care for all, housing for all, retirement security for all, there is already rampant, radical class and racial inequality in this country. It's going to get worse. And it's not just about them out there. Whether you have the ability to stay in school, whether you have the ability to send your children to college, whether you have the ability to one day retire in dignity. And as Cornell said today and yesterday, one of the human conditions is the human, human life moves fast. Sometime before you notice, you'll have maybe kids, but then you'll be thinking about retirement. You don't have to be a radical. You can just be a German finance banker who wrote in the International Tribune the other day, an op-ed piece, saying, Americans have to realize that they're becoming more like the rest of the globe, and that ordinary people often can't privately save enough to provide retirement, save enough to send their kids to good universities. We're the only country in the world that has such a heavy private sector and such expensive schools. Everybody's, you know, again, and what he said is, Americans are going to have to realize that progressive taxation is a good thing, that this is a backward country where only 35% of our income is transferred through taxation for public goods. Our roads are falling apart, our public sewage is falling apart. Look at any city, you'll see all this digging and stuff. It's because our gas lines, our sewage lines were built 100 years ago, they're falling apart. We only spend 1.5% of our GDP on infrastructure every year. Every other advanced developed country spends 3.5%. Right? So our cities are falling apart. And unless we get up to like, a no and I'm not romanticizing, there's a lot of racism and anti-immigrant mobilization in Northern Europe, but it is true that if you're included in the Northern European model, there has to be a struggle to include everyone. Um, you know, if you're a working class, you're much better off in Germany and Scandinavia and Benelux. I don't want to romanticize it. There's a lot of exploitation of immigrant labor, and there are huge struggles, and there's a lot of excluded low-wage people there, too. But it's not as vicious because there is better unemployment. There is better housing, publicly funded housing, etc. And they spend 42 to 45% of their GDP through the public sector. 
one of the dirty little secrets is, I won't go on forever, they partly use a somewhat regressive tax called the value-added tax. They use the kind of a more progressive version of a sales tax to fund it. But the point is that we can't have decent lives, and we don't have decent lives, because kids, working class, and even middle strata kids can't afford to go to college. And we have to start critiquing the incredible inegalitarian nature of access to higher ed. We also have to talk, though, that it's a brutal society that says everyone should have their life opportunities and those of the kids determined by whether or not they like to sit docilely in classrooms and give back what faculty want when they're 15 to 22. Lots of people, you know, are, are, should be going back to school and retraining in their 20s and 30s. But also, let's be honest, everyone knows, even in the most egalitarian, of, egalitarian even in the best varieties of capitalism, Northern European corporatism, whatever, education reproduces the class and educational background of parents. And we have to say that this isn't a merit, A, this isn't, it's not a meritocracy, particularly when our meritocratic schools, you know that only 7% of kids at highly select, at Ivy League schools come from the bottom half of the income strata. And a lot of the kids of color come from the global elite, come from immigrant families that brought a lot of cultural capital, etc. Education tends to, even in a more democratic form of capitalism, even under socialism, reproduces kind of the kids who had educational advantages at home. You should have a good life regardless of how you do in a meritocratic educational rat race at age 16. Your kids should have an equally good life. There should be no difference in the life opportunities of kids whose parents were great students versus bad students versus who we have to say that America cannot be a democracy when the life opportunities of a kid born in Scarsdale are radically more advantaged than the life opportunities of a kid born in East New York or Ocean Hill, Brownsville. I can't even say Harlem anymore because it's heavily gentrified. I mean, we, that's the basic democratic <coughs> impulse and that's the basic argument for socialism. That A, life should not be a rat race. B, you should get certain basic human needs because human society collectively interdependently is productive enough to provide a decent life for everyone. And that certain human needs should be based on human, on the right to exist as a full human being and to reach your potential. And we have to say, what's wrong with public health care, with universal health care? By the way, we have to say it works in France, it works in Canada, it works in Britain. There are a few queuing issues in a few countries that only spend 8% of their GDP on health care. If Canada, the right, defunded it somewhat, if Britain raised it from 8.5 to 9.5, there'd be no problems in the system. But there are no problems in France. There are no problems in Germany. Canadians get propaganda from the U.S. every day. 85% of Canadians live within 30 miles of our godforsaken imperial borders. And they get U.S. TV up the you-know-what. And 88% of Canadians, despite listening to, you know, Glenn Beck, they can listen to Glenn Beck all the fuck they want. If you go to Canada, you can get American cable TV. They can listen to, you know, John Stossel on ABC. It's not just Fox News. Say, oh, there are all these problems in Canada. A guy with a hernia has to wait three weeks to see a doctor. Whatever. 88% of Canadians hear that, and they say, we would never give up our system to the American, because the American healthcare system is barbaric. I mean, the American <laughs> And we have to realize that, and then I'll talk briefly about the crisis and wrap up the financial crisis and what to do. But we have to also realize, I mean, Marxists, you know, go all over the map because everything's dialectically interrelated. But, you know, we're going to hear people, look, with global migration, obviously labor doesn't have as much right to be mobile as capital, and certainly doesn't gain rights you know, as much as capital gains, quote, rights, we have to realize, first of all, anyone who works in a society, they and their family, should have rights of citizenship immediately. You know, if migrant, if immigrant workers stopped working in Northern Europe or the United States today, there'd be a mass crisis, and the upper middle class would be fucking freaking out. Because who's going to take care of the kids? Who's going to walk their fucking dog? I mean, a society where people can hire more upper middle class and upper class people can hire people to walk dogs, and where children in our inner cities have the life expectancy of people in Bangladesh. I mean, the first world is in the third world, I mean, it has been exploiting people in the third world for 400 years. Bangladesh is years. doing better. Right. No, I know. Well, Bangladesh is doing better because they at least have some textile industries, and they don't have the corruption of Pakistan, and they're not, yeah, it is true. But people, and people are beginning to organize. But, the, I mean, Gaddafi knows a lot more about South Asia than 
I, I assure you. <laughs> what I'm going to say is, uh, the point is that we have conditions. The bottom third of America is definitely